what exactly do we mean by degrees of freedom? If you look closely at a droplet of water and observe the motion of the molecules, you should be able to pick out translational motion, rotational motion, and vibrational motion of the molecules. Translational motion occurs when the entire center of mass of a molecule moves in the container. Rotational motion occurs when the molecule spins about its axes, and vibrational motion occurs when the nuclei in the molecule move relative to each other. So we have stretching and bending motions of the molecules. These motions are often discussed as the degrees of freedom of the molecule. There is one degree of freedom which you can't see by looking at the motion of the molecules, and that's because it has to do with the motion of the electrons relative to the nuclei, and that is the electronic degree of freedom, where electrons are free to move further away or closer to the nuclei and populate ground states or excited states of the electronic states of the molecule. Let's focus on the motion of the nuclei in discussing the degrees of freedom of the molecules. If we place our water molecule on a Cartesian coordinate with the oxygen atom at the origin, then we can specify the position of each of the atoms in the molecule with three coordinates for each atom. Thus, we can specify exactly where each of the atoms is at any given time by using three n coordinates, where three is because we need an x, a y, and a z for each atom, and n is the number of atoms in my molecule. So for water, we need nine total coordinates to specify where each atom is at every moment in time. If we can specify the position of each atom, then we can specify its translational, rotational, and vibrational motion at any given time. Thus, to completely describe all the degrees of freedom, all the motions of the molecule, I need 3n coordinates, and so there are 3n total degrees of freedom. The center of mass of my water molecule can be described with three coordinates, x, y, and z. Since it takes three coordinates to describe where the center of mass is at any time, there are three translational degrees of freedom. There are three axes of rotation for the water molecule shown here, and therefore there are three rotational degrees of freedom. This gives us a total of six degrees of freedom that, are de that describe rotations and translations. Since there are 3n total degrees of freedom, that means that there are 3n minus 6 left for vibrations. Thus, since water has 3 atoms, n equals 3, and we expect 3 different vibrational modes. These 3 modes are shown here as the asymmetric stretch, the symmetric stretch, and the bending motion. For a linear molecule, such as CO2, we only have two rotational motions because rotation along the molecular axis does not move the position of any of the atoms and is thus not a rotation. Therefore, we have three translations, two rotations, for a total of five degrees of freedom out of the total number of 3n, and so there are 3n minus 5 left for vibrations when we have a linear molecule. Since CO2 also has three atoms, we expect 3n is 9 minus 5 equals 4 vibrations for the molecule. Notice that there are only 1 symmetric stretching, 2 asymmetric stretching, and 3 a bending mode shown here. But this bending mode is doubly degenerate. 
So there are two bending modes, and these bends occur in different directions. The one shown here has the oxygen atoms moving in the zy plane, but the oxygen atoms can also come out of the plane and into the plane and therefore move on the xy plane. Those two different bending motions have exactly the same amount of energy associated with them and therefore are degenerate. In summary then, there are three n total degrees of freedom. Three of those are translations, always. Three are rotations when you have a nonlinear molecule, and two are rotations when you have a linear molecule. That leaves 3n minus 6 vibrations for a nonlinear molecule and 3n minus 5 vibrations for a linear molecule.